Hi, I'm George Rolla with Advanced Wealth Tech Inc. and California Welling Institute. Uh, we are an AWS Educational Institution member, also SIMS approved and a credit testing facility. Uh, we're also a City of Los Angeles uh, approved testing agency. And what we're gonna do today is show you our latest uh, uh, bed test jig, the Welder Buster, and uh, go over the operating procedure so that you can operate safely. Uh, I would like to show you the things, the items that you should have on hand when you're operating this uh, bed test jig. Uh, uh, you should always operate it with work gloves. Always wear eye and face protection. And uh, you're gonna need, uh, obviously, a well test bed test specimen. And um, you're not included is a small C-clamp to secure that to a welding table. Um, you also should have a, a cloth to wipe the dust off the uh, shoulders on the bend test jig and some type of light lubricant. Uh, you should not bend a specimen dry. Very good. Okay, we're going to talk about the bend test jig. It conforms to AWS B4.0 in its dimensions, the way it's designed. Also conforms to Clause 4 of AWS D1.1 Structural Welding Code for Steel, as well as uh, B2.1, the specification, uh, the standard for qualification of welding uh, operators, welders, and procedures. Uh, it conforms also to ASME Section 9, the American Society for Mechanical Engineering, Boiler Pressure Vessel Code Section 9. This is the front uh, of the uh, bend test jig. Uh, the lid will be open towards your right. It's limited on how much it will open, and it's designed to fall back down and always stay in the closed position. Also, this is uh, uh, convenient for transporting. You can uh, use it as a handle. Uh, the front will have the stickers uh, and also uh, a slot for the pump handle and the relief valve is also in the front of the uh, bent test jig. This bent test jig operates with an 8 ton heavy duty hydraulic bottle jack. Uh, it can be serviced. Uh, it can be uh, removed, uh, serviced in the case that it runs low, low in oil. Uh, as well as if it needs to be replaced. Now we're going to show you how to operate this jig. Uh, this is a mock bent test specimen. It's really just a piece of 3 8 flat bar, 6 inches uh, long. Uh, so the uh, preparation it will be in accordance to uh, AWS B4.0 and uh, as well as D2, D11 and uh, B2.1 in section 9. Uh, these. Uh, Specifications for preparation of bend test specimens will be uh, uh, um, provided to you in these uh, welding codes. Uh, what we have here is I painted a picture of a, a, um, a weld on the surface of it. It, it. There is no weld on this specimen, but we're going to use it as a mock-up. Uh, it uh, represents a face bend on a, uh, a limited thickness D11 welder qualification test. It has been cut to six inches long. Uh, and it will be inserted in the bent test jig with the weld uh, if, that we're intending to inspect facing up. Please be aware that uh, this bent test jig is designed for materials that uh, yield strength of 50 KSI or less. Uh, that means like A36 uh, uh, test coupons and that, and that sort of uh, material. Maybe if it was a pipe material, it would be a uh, 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 ASTM A53 or, or um, Great B or something similar. Uh, the, it's important to uh, prepare the specimen in accordance to the code. It is also important to, to uh, finish it. Uh, the, after it's been thermal cut or cut by a saw, it needs to be ground smooth uh, so that there will be no weld reinforcement left on there. Uh, if we're doing a face uh, bend, uh, if it's a root, root bend, uh, likewise, it needs to be prepared. And uh, after, uh, following the grinding, uh, I highly recommend a fine, smooth finish uh, achieved with a sanding disc. Uh, make sure that you don't leave any grinding gouges. Uh, this could cause the, um, uh, the shoulders on the test jig to be damaged. Ensure that the uh, dimensions of the bent test specimen are six inches in length with a weld centered in the, in the, at the three inch center line. Uh, and that the thickness never exceeds three-eighths of an inch. Uh, it, it's not possible to properly uh, bend uh, 
anything exceeding three eighths thickness because of the elongation exceeding the capabilities of the material. But furthermore, it would get jammed inside the jig. Uh, these jigs are designed uh, shoulder to shoulder with dimensions as uh, specified. Uh, and if the specimen was inserted in there, bent, that exceeds three eighths of an inch thick, it will get jammed in there and cause damage to your jig. Uh, therefore, keep that in mind. Following the specimen preparation, uh, we're gonna make sure that the uh, test jig is adequately secured. All we need is a small clamp, and we're gonna place it, uh, the bent test jig in near a corner of a table, and we're gonna secure it with a clamp close to the back side. We can use two clamps if you wish, not necessarily uh, need it, but um, if, if someone would like to, uh, in the case of uh, maybe school where students are you operating and so on, I would probably recommend having two clamps, one in each corner of the, of the base. The next step is to retrieve the pump handle. Uh, we're going to open the lid with one hand uh, and insert it inside this internal tube, square tube. We're going to fish out the pump handle uh, that is going to be stored there. Now I'm going to show you how to prepare this for the operation. First step is uh, let's take a clean cloth. Uh, also, we want to have handy uh, light oil lubricant. Um, we have to make sure that there's no grinding dust or anything because these things are usually in a welding shop uh, and we need to make sure that they are well protected from dust. Wipe uh, inside from these access holes where the specimen is going to be inserted. We need to wipe the area where the shoulder is that the specimen will be um, frictioning. Uh, that would be um, on both sides. We can also do it from the inside as well, although there's very little room for us to get in there. Uh, if you have compressed air, you can do it with an air compressor, blow all the dust out. Now, just from the outside, I'm going to show you the points that you should lubricate. Through these uh, uh, access holes for the specimen, you should lubricate uh, the surfaces that will be in touch with your bend specimen on both sides, okay? And uh, then uh, once we got that lubricated, we are gonna proceed uh, with the operation of it. Okay, now, before we insert the specimen in the test jig, we have to make sure that the ram on the hydraulic bottle jug is pushed down as far as it'll go all the way. So. We will insert the uh, pump handle into the relief valve, open it counterclockwise, maybe a turn. Now we're gonna open the lid and push the, with this pump handle, push down on the ram. Make sure that the bottle jack ram is all the way down. Now we can go back to the relief valve and clockwise turn it until it seats. Make sure that it's well closed without forcing it. Now the bottle jack is prepared. The, the test jig can be used. We are going to lubricate before inserting the specimen on this side and on the other side. And I believe that we can lubricate from the inside after we insert the specimen. The specimen is six inches long. It'll be centered between the two shoulders. And to do that, we're gonna notice that the right edge will be flush approximately with the outside uh, or close to the outside of the bent test jig. So we are ready now to insert the bent test uh, specimen. And from the left to the right, Now make sure it is not sticking out. It needs to be flush on the right side. And if it's inset just a 16th or an eighth of an inch, that's fine, but make sure it's not sticking out. Now the next step is to insert the pump handle into the pump and stroke it just enough to secure the, te the bent test specimen, okay? Without forcing it up just yet. Before we start pumping the specimen through the jig, 
I highly recommend that we put just a few drops of lubricant on the shoulder, on each shoulder, uh, on the top of the bent test jig. If you can look inside, we'll put a little bit of oil there and a little bit of oil on this side, as well as on the outside. A word of warning, if your specimen is longer than six inch, as it begins to be pushed through the shoulders, it will get caught on the open squares. So therefore you should never bend a specimen longer than six inches. Please trim it before you start operating the equipment. For operating this bent test jig, we wanna make sure that the lid is closed. The bent specimen could be forced or ejected forcefully. So we wanna make sure the lid is closed. This lid is designed, it's fabricated uh, so that it falls always. It cannot be open uh, far enough to stay open by itself. It will, its own weight will close it. Uh, and uh, therefore don't uh, uh, modify it so that it will stay open for your convenience. That is not approved by us. And um, when we pump the specimen through, I wanna make sure that you use two hands and uh, use full strokes of that uh, pump handle uh, in, in, other, in order to not uh, damage uh, the uh, bottle jack pump. We're now ready to operate the bed test jig and let's try it. Now that the specimen ejected, we're gonna open the lid with the right hand, and with your left hand, you're gonna retrieve it. And here it is. Uh, it, this represents what would be a face bend on a limited thickness D11 welder qualification test. Uh, the, you can see the weld is clearly on the radius, uh, bend, bend radius surface, uh, and uh, it really actually did a wonderful job that little bit of lubricant goes a long way. So let's say we're all done testing our welders. Uh, we're gonna uh, open the relief valve by turning it counterclockwise about a turn. We don't wanna overdo it. It might uh, uh, thread out of its uh, place. We're gonna open with the right hand and with the pump handle, we're gonna push it right on the push piston uh, and push the ram down until it seats all the way down. It is not hard to push. Um, it does have to be manually pushed down until it bottoms out. Okay, once it's bottomed out, we can close the relief valve uh, to ensure that uh, no fluid leaks out. You close it tight, snug, but not crazy gorilla tight, okay? And now we can put away the uh, pump handle inside where we retrieved it earlier. I want to remind you that the lid uh, is, does not have a latch, uh, so if you turn the jack upside down, you'll probably uh, open the lid and lose your, possibly lose your pump handle, so I want to warn you against that. Always keep it right side up. It is not good for a hydraulic bottle jack to be turned upside down anyways. Before we ship the jig, we always, always test at least one specimen before the test jig goes out in, uh, to you. Okay. So if uh, you receive a test jig with a little bit of lubricant on it and maybe some scratches, it's because we actually tested it. We want to know it works before it gets to you. Uh, 